Hey, this is Steven from Rugged Routes back for another tutorial on why your race radio sucks. Last week we talked about inefficient coax cables to connect your antenna to your radio and what to do about that, how much power you lose, and all that sort of thing. So if you haven't seen that video yet, I strongly recommend you go back and check out that video as it will give you some insight that you were going to need to follow along with this one. So really quick to recap last week, we were talking about a 50 watt radio uh, transmitting through about 17 feet of RG58 AU coax, which left us with 39 watts out the other side. And we were able to regain about 10 watts by going to a much better coax. But to continue this example today, we're going to move along with our 39 watts uh, on our RG58 AU coax, and we're going to say that that power is coming into our antenna. Now, before we get too deep into the antennas themselves, we need to understand what a radio frequency is. Okay, and basically, when you have a radio frequency at let's say 150 megahertz, just 150.000, that means that that radio is putting out a signal that is fluctuating 150 million times a second and clearly that's really 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 fast right or some but another radio that's let's say on 100 megahertz just for an example's sake that's 50 megahertz lower so it's only i say only but it's a hundred million cycles per second and those two signals when you compare them they are basically taking up the same amount of space, which means that the one that's wiggling less, the radio waves are spread apart more, whereas the higher frequency ones are squished together. And that's important to know because when it comes to antennas and antenna tuning, the length of the antenna that you need to be happy on a certain frequency is directly proportionate to the length of the radio wave, like literally the physical length. If you can see it in free space, that antenna needs to be happy with a, a certain length of radio wave. So now that we have a better understanding of that, we can take a look at this first column here where it has like the, the 1.0, 1.1, and so on and so forth down here on this left column. And that's what we call our SWR reading. And SWR, it, it stands for standing wave ratio, and you don't need to know that, but what you do need to know is that an SWR of 1 means that all of the power that's being delivered out the end of the coax is going into the antenna and being radiated into the air. Whereas an SWR rating of higher than 1 means that some of that power is getting reflected back to the radio from the antenna. The antenna doesn't like it. It's not a good match. It's the wrong, usually the wrong length. Then there's some other more scientific reasons why a antenna may not be tuning properly, but for the intents and purposes of this video, we're only going to be talking about the length of the antenna. And if the, if the length is wrong, then a portion of that power will reflect back to the radio and basically be lost. And it can actually damage the radio if it's exceptionally bad. But I know from personal experience that a lot of the antennas especially the half wave antennas that are commonly seen in the race radio world are not tuned for a lot of the race frequencies. In fact, they come tuned for much lower frequencies. So when you use them on the race frequencies, your SWR is going to end up falling somewhere around the 2.5 to one range. And what does that mean? Well, that means you're probably losing about 20% of your power if you haven't tuned your antenna, which is terrible, right? Because if you're losing, we'll go back here, if you have a 50 watt radio and you're losing 22% in your coax, which gives us 39 watts, and that 39 watts makes it to the antenna, but the antenna doesn't like it, and it's bouncing back almost another 20%, now your radio is only actually radiating less than 32 watts out into the sky, which is terrible. So just by tuning your antenna, you can take that 32 watts 
even on the lossy coax and get that up to 39 watts. And then if you also upgrade your coax like we talked about last week and we end up with 48.8 watts coming out of the end of the coax instead, then we can put that up here. And now we're doing 48.8 on a properly tuned quarter wave antenna. I did say quarter wave because there are some differences. So as you can see, there are three different columns, three different antenna types. And you'll see that the quarter wave and the half wave antennas offer no gain. And gain is similar to the dB loss that we were talking about with the coax last week. Remember I said for every 3 dB of loss, you cut your power in half. Well, with antennas, if you have a 3 dB gain, then you are doubling your power instead. And that is something we're going to see on the 5 8 wave antennas. But before we get to that, I'm going to explain the different types of antennas. And we'll get into the numbers again. So the quarter wave antennas, it, they're convenient because they're pretty short. The whip is about half the length of the half wave antennas but it needs a ground plane because for an antenna to really be happy it has to be about half a wavelength long so instead of having a half wavelength antenna it only uses a quarter wave sticking off the roof and then the ground plane is acting as the other half but what's a ground plane the ground plane is not to be mistaken for just a ground connection you don't just take a wire from the ground connection of the uh, of the coax cable. So like if we take a look at the same uh, diagram that we saw last week here, this metal piece here will connect or be in contact with the roof. So if you're putting it through a roof, you want to make sure there's no powder coat or paint or anything that this is able to contact bare metal just right at the area where it's going through the hole in the roof. And that way, this uh, ground connection through the coax can allow that roof to act as the other half of the antenna. Now with the half wave antennas, so the antenna is a full half wave and it makes the radio waves happy all by itself. It does not need a metal roof. So it's really convenient that way. The drawback is, is that there's no gain. There's nothing really advantageous about you running the half wave antenna except for the fact that you just don't need a metal roof so this is good if you're like you have a jeep if you have a side by side with a plastic roof um, if you've got uh, a race car maybe with a carbon fiber roof or a um, fiberglass roof anything non-metallic that does not conduct electricity if you have that for your roof then the half wave antenna is going to be by far the easiest and most reliable way to move forward. You are still going to have to tune it, but it is going to be the best way to go. However, if you do have a metal roof, I see no reason to go with a quarter wave antenna unless for some reason you have to have a short antenna. And if it's your, if your excuse is that you have to put it in uh, your RV, it doesn't fit or whatever, they, they unscrew right off the roof. It's really easy. So in my opinion, there's no reason to go with a quarter wave antenna. You want to use the 5 8 wave antenna if you have the metal roof. And why? Because it gives you the 3 dB of gain, which is basically doubling your power. So as you can see here, if you have a perfectly matched 1 to 1 SWR, you're going to basically double the power that came out the other end of the coax. So if you've got a 50 watt radio and really good coax that's given us 48.8 watts to the antenna, the antenna is going to take that 48.8 watts and it's going to double it. You're going to get about 97 watts of power. And if you're wondering how the heck that's possible, I will explain that as well. So over here, we have two different radiation patterns is what we call it. So on the left side is the type of radiation pattern we would see if you have like a quarter wave or a half wave antenna. 
And in, the, in this diagram, you can pretend that our antenna is just right up and down here in the center. And as the radio waves leave the antenna, they kind of go up at an angle in, this, in these big lobe shapes. And you can see that a lot of power is going just up into outer space. And even the most uh, direct or most powerful direction that the radio waves are being radiated at are not along the ground, but rather up at a pretty steep angle here. And even across the ground, there's not a lot of power there as it dissipates and goes up. So this is not very favorable compared to the 5 8 wave antenna. So the 5 8 you end up with something more like this, where you have a lot less power being wasted up in the sky, and all of that power that it's normally lost is being redirected and shot straight across the ground. And that's where the power is actually coming from. So it's not creating power, it's just taking power that would normally be wasted and redirecting it in a more favorable direction. I think that's the easiest way I can explain it. So now that we have an understanding of how all that works, let's have a little bit of fun with some numbers here just for a quick minute. So let's say you have your 50 watt radio perfectly tuned and you got a 5 8 wave antenna. It's perfectly, you know, everything's looking good. You're putting out 97 watts but your buddy splurged on the 110 watt Kenwood and he's really excited about it, but knows nothing about coax, nothing about antennas. And so he just threw together the same high loss coax RG 58 AU. And now his 110 watt radio is only putting out 85.91 Watts. Right, so we're gonna take that 85.91 to the antenna. And let's say he just has his half wave antenna and he didn't tune it. He's got about a 2.5 to one SWR. His 110 watt radio is now only putting out 70 watts. That's less, much less performance out of that 110 watt radio than you with your 50 watt radio your perfectly tuned 5 8 wave antenna at 97 watts. So almost 30 watts more effective power on your 50 watt radio than your buddy with his 110 watt radio that is not tuned at all. However, on the flip side, if you do have that 110 watt radio and you do everything correctly and everything's set up really nice and efficient, say five and a half feet of LMR 400 Ultraflex, 107 and a half watts forward, five eighths wave antenna, perfect tune. That 110 watt radio is now basically putting out the equivalent of about 215 watts. How awesome is that? Free power. This thing would work like an absolute bomb. Um, I guess one last example we can take a look at is if you have that 110 watt radio putting out 214 watts, but let's say you do have the higher loss coax, 85.91, let's see here. So if we're at 171 and a half now, but then we go to 107 delivered to the antenna, to 214, huge difference. So if you're running a 110 watt radio and you're not running good coax, this could be a night and day difference with uh, how much power you're putting out and how well you're, you're able to receive. That's almost like a whole other 50 watt radio just added to your 100 watt radio just by changing the cable. Like why would you not do that? So anyways, I think I'm gonna get off my soapbox now. I really appreciate you guys watching. I hope this was helpful. Please drop any questions or comments you have below this video. And if you do want to get some coax ordered up, uh, I do have some on the way after the last video. A few people reached out, said that they want some. I was ordering up some for the UTV anyways, as I showed you guys in the last video, a lot of stuff is getting rewired. So um, yeah, definitely reach out if that's something you're interested in. 
If you haven't subscribed, make sure to do that. And next week we should be getting back into GPS tutorials. So thanks again, and we'll catch you guys on the next one.